We have new developments on the dining services staff shortage. Hear from one concerned parent who wants to see change. And if you want to perform on stage, your opportunity to get involved is just hours away. We have details on the senior directed one X. Valpo is staying at 86 degrees with moderate winds at 14 miles per hour. We're going to look and see if that hot weather will stick around. We have that and more. This edition of 15 News at 5 starts right now. Thank you for joining us on 15 News at 5. I'm Jessica Burns. And I'm Blake Harms. Over the past several weeks, we have brought you information on the issues and changes to dining services from the perspective of, of students and administration. This week, we sat down with Debbie Hebda, a Valpo mom who has taken up the cause to help fix the issues with dining services. Uh, it, it's because I really visit the pit. Facebook page. And I responded to another parent who had initially inquired, are any of your students um, commenting on the lack of services and the lack of options in founders and in the cafe and the increased prices? And I kind of just watched this flood, this, these gates had opened and it, this flood of parents responding. And say, if it's, you know, if it's up to me, I'll, I'll drive down there. I'll, get a hotel, I'll move in, I'll do, I mean, this is important. You know, you send a kid and you can this out one day when you send a kid to school and you stay to that school, you have my child. Sorry. Um, you want what's best for them and you want what's best for everybody. And so, you know, I'm really coming from that place of this isn't to be, again, it's punitive and it's not to be malevolent. Let's make this the best experience we can for all the kids. Debbie's been working with Rick Amrine to find solutions to these issues. One solution they came up with was to hold an open forum for students to come in to discuss how they feel about dining services. This forum will be held on Monday, October 15th from 7 to 8 p.m. in the hearth room at Founders Table in the Hare Union. All students are welcome. Tonight, there's an interesting and unique event in the Union Ballrooms for all to enjoy. The Defamation Experience takes a look at the justice system and employs a unique twist for the audience. VU TV's Katie Nicolau is outside the ballrooms with more on the event. Thanks, guys. I'm standing outside of Ballroom C, where in just three hours, the Defamation Experience will be taking place. It's an interactive play about the United States judicial system, and here's the kicker. The audience is the jury, so you get to interact with the players and see how race, ethnicity, gender, social class, anything deals with and influences the judicial system in the United States. What's even better is if you're a freshman, it's core approved. If you aren't a freshman, it's still going to be a great time. So come on down, 8 p.m., ballrooms in the Union. Should be a great time. Back to you guys. The Chicago Marathon was held this Sunday with 45,000 participants. They start and finish in Grand Park, running through 29 different neighborhoods. The winner of this year's race was Mo Farah, finishing with a time of 2 hours, 5 minutes, and 11 seconds. Have you ever wanted to perform on stage but don't think you have the experience for it? The senior directed one X just might be your break into showbiz. The seniors theater majors are looking for 40 people to fill roles in seven short plays. No prior acting experience is needed. If you are interested in auditioning, there is a sign up board behind the main theater in the VUCA. Auditions for senior directed one X are tonight from 6 to 10 p.m. in the studio theater room 1314 in the VUCA.
Thanks, Heather. Brett Kavanaugh was sworn in as a Supreme Court justice over the weekend, leaving many divided. Hear from supporters and protesters coming up. And President Trump plans to put more sanctions on Iran to limit the country's nuclear program. We have the details next. Good morning, Valparaiso University. What's a better way to start your day than with a new jam? And WVUR has just what you need. But if you close your eyes, does it almost feel like nothing changed at all? Broadcasting sports, news, weather, and music on air, online, and on campus. WVUR is my jam. After weeks of turbulent debate, Brett Kavanaugh has been sworn in as the ninth Supreme Court Justice. The controversial vote coming as demonstrators gathered outside the Supreme Court and the Capitol. Natasha Chen has the latest from Capitol Hill. Mr. Grassley. Aye. In a high-stakes Saturday vote, the Senate confirmed Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court. On this vote, the ayes are 50, the nays are 48. The voting was interrupted at times by multiple protesters. Hours later, Kavanaugh was sworn in as an associate justice of the Supreme Court. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell touted a victory in a fiery confirmation battle fueled by allegations of sexual assault from Christine Blasey Ford, accusations Kavanaugh denies. It's a good day for America and uh, an important day uh, for the Senate. President Trump applauded the vote in Topeka, Kansas for a Saturday night rally. Just a few hours ago, the U.S. Senate confirmed Judge Brett Kavanaugh to the United States Supreme Court. Sexual After a bruising battle, some lawmakers shared concerns about the message the confirmation sends to sexual assault victims. This body has had a test and we are failing that test. Hundreds of demonstrators for and against Kavanaugh made their voices heard in the nation's capital. One of the largest crowds gathered in front of the steps of the Supreme Court as Kavanaugh was sworn in. On Capitol Hill, I'm Natasha Chen. President Trump announced tough new sanctions on Iran in August as part of his maximum pressure campaign to bring Tehran to the negotiating table over its nuclear program. The sanctions, which go into effect in one month, will hit Iran's purchase of American dollars, its trading gold and other precious metals, and transactions related to Iran's currency. Tehran has set a deadline for its trading partners to find ways to bypass the American sanctions, but to what avail? CNN's John Tefertios has a story. A historic moment after years of negotiations. Finally, a landmark agreement to curb Iran's nuclear program, a deal the U.S. President Donald Trump calls one of the worst ever made. Earlier this year, he fulfilled his campaign promise of withdrawing from the accord and reimposing sanctions on Iran's struggling economy, with a repeated message to those wanting to do business with the oil-rich country. Any individual or entity who fails to comply with these sanctions will face severe consequences. Despite the threats, the European Union is scrambling to keep the deal alive. They have reason to. EU Iranian trade is running at over two billion dollars a month, numbers that are now expected to fall. As Europe sees it, without trade and investment, Iran has little incentive to go along with any deal. We are putting in place mechanisms together with the Europeans, but also with others from all over the world that would guarantee that trade can continue. So the bloc has proposed a new mechanism, a so-called special purpose vehicle 
which it hopes could be up and running before November. It functions as a clearinghouse facilitating trade with Iran in euros and, crucially, allowing European companies and perhaps others to illegally trade with Iran without facing U.S. retaliatory sanctions. But it may be too little too late. Several European heavyweights, including Peugeot, Renault and Airbus, have already pulled out of Iran. And many firms are reluctant to engage in business that puts them at odds with the U.S. Treasury Department, including French oil giant Total. I cannot run a global company like Total without having access to the U.S. banking system or U.S. investors. It's just a matter of fact. The world economy today is organized around a currency, which is a dollar. Even Iran's president, Hassan Rouhani, is doubtful about the plan's chances for success despite Europe's good intentions. In uh, reality, in a tangible fashion, our expectations have not been met. A sentiment shared by many multinationals, who by all accounts will be very reluctant to jeopardize access to the world's biggest economy, the United States, to plant a flag in the Iranian market. A reward for information leading to a, a suspect in a pair of killings in Chicago this week has grown to $16,000. ATF Chicago contributed $5,000, which adds to a previous reward offering of $11,000. Chicago police say the two shooting deaths came within a 36-hour period, about a half a mile apart, and were likely committed by the same person. Shell casings found at the crime scenes are a match. A 73-year-old man was shot and and killed Sunday morning as he walked his dogs in the area of Rogers Park. On Monday night, a 24-year-old man was, sh was walking when he was shot in the head at close range. Police say a surveillance video image shows a suspect dressed in all black and wearing a ski mask. The victims do not appear connected. And we are now learning that the limousine involved in a horrific crash in upstate New York that left 20 dead failed to stop at an intersection before the wreck. That's from state police whose representative said the limo then plowed into another car in Shoher. The limousine traveled across the intersection into a parking lot and struck a 2015 Toyota Highlander that was unoccupied and parked. Two pedestrians standing nearby were also struck and killed. In total, 20 victims were killed. All were adults. 18 of the victims were uh, in the limousine, including the driver and uh, the two pedestrians that were struck. The limousine was transporting a group of couples to a birthday party. One of the couples killed were married last month. The police are still notifying friends and families of the victims, so not all of the victims of Saturday's crash have been identified yet. The NTSB says the wreck was the nation's deadliest road incident since February of 2009. After the break, Heather Bricker will have your full forecast. Plus, we'll take a look at this past week's Crusader Sports. Stick with us. entertainment is at risk one man is given a mission but he is about to face his biggest challenge yet he will race against the clock and open doors to new possibilities that will save weekends as we know it What are you doing? I'm looking for free movies. Oh, I'll help you with that. Just go to movies.valpo.edu. They have all the best movies, including The Hobbit and 22 Jump Street. Whoa, is that easy? It's that easy. Grab some popcorn, grab some buddies, and watch movies.valpo.edu's great selection. With the temperatures in the mid 80s right now, we are looking at some 
14 mile per hour winds in Valpo, which isn't really helping our humidity at all. Dew points right now, Valpo is 60 degrees in dew points, which is why we're feeling quite humid out there as well. 66 in Peoria, so even more humid. You could tell that that front is just past Davenport, which is going to be bringing some more weather in for us later on today. Future temperatures, 80 degrees Monday night. It's going to drop down just a little bit. It's going to be a little bit humid. 81 in Gary and 82 in Chicago. By Tuesday morning, we're going to be at 72, 73 in Gary and 73 in Chicago. So that warm weather will stick around just for that time. And 76 Tuesday night and 79 in Gary. Now, once Wednesday rolls around, that's when our temperatures are going to dip down to the low 70s sitting at 69 at Valpo. And by Wednesday afternoon, we're going to be back up to 75. So the big picture right now, we're going to see this frontal boundary come right on through by Wednesday, dropping our temperature significantly from 73 back down to 60, back up to 72. Future radar, our major concern is just going to be some clouds that are just going to be the remnants of the storms, which are just beyond that cold front boundary. But by Wednesday, we might have some chances of scattered storms on our area just a little bit, which is going to still keep it pretty cloudy, keeping that moisture in our air, feeling more and more humid. Now, by Wednesday afternoon, that's our major concern for Valpo. That storm is going to sit up right over the lake and it's going to produce quite some rainfall for us here. We're going to look at those rainfall totals right now. We're going to get almost an inch of rain falling in Valpo, just under one hundredth of an inch in Gary. So it's going to be a pretty wet week ahead of us, but isn't going to show up till Wednesday. Once those temperatures dip down, we're going to take a look at our seven day forecast when we come back. Thanks, Heather. After the break, we'll recap this past week's Crusader Sports. What is passion? At Valpo, it's something that pours out of us uncontrollably. It's a late night shot of caffeine, cramming for finals, a jam session with friends. It sees deep into space, turns big stuff into small potatoes, floats boats and floods the senses. Passion is alive, it has a heartbeat, and it lives in you. How do we know? Because at Valpo, passion is who we are. Well, I think that's all we need. Thank you so much for coming in. We'll be in touch. Okay, this is it. Just shake his hand and walk out with your head held high. Don't mess this up. Thank you. Don't let a bad handshake get in the way of getting the job you want. Find out more at the Career Center. Crusader fans, another week of athletics has come and gone, so let's dive right into the action. The Valparaiso volleyball team advanced to an impressive 5-1 in the Valley and 18-3 overall with a 3-2 win over Loyola Friday night. After losing the first two sets, the Crusaders claimed the last three sets, winning the match 3-2. Valpo is now one of two teams in the nation to have 18 victories this season and joins the 2004 team as the only two teams in program history to have won 18 of the first 21 matches. The volleyball team has two road matches before coming back to the arc where you can catch them in action on Friday, October 19th against Evan. And the Valparaiso football team fell to Pioneer Football League foe Dayton at Welcome Stadium Saturday afternoon, falling 53 to 20. Senior receiver Griffin Norberg has had touchdown receptions of 58 yards or longer in four of the last five games this season. Saturday was no different. Redshirt sophomore Brandon Martin made his first touchdown catch, and junior Kyle Cartles 
picked up his 11th career touchdown. The Crusaders will take Brownfield next Saturday at 1 p.m. for the annual Hoosier Helmet rivalry game against Butler, kickoff at 1 p.m. The men's soccer team came to a scoreless final against Missouri Valley foe Loyola Sunday night at Brownfield as well. Due to inclement weather conditions, the women's soccer game versus Illinois State was canceled on Sunday. You can catch the Crusaders back in action next Saturday against Missouri State. Kickoff at 7 p.m. at Brownfield. And moving on to national sports, the Lions beat the Packers yesterday. A big upset there, winning 34 to 21, Oof. or 31 to 24 rather. MLB playoffs continue. NBA just getting started. Chase Elliott wins a second NASCAR race yesterday, and college football. Is as exciting as ever. Wow, that is a lot of sports. And Absolutely. there's definitely a lot more that's going to be going on. Yeah, and with this nice weather, you know, Valparaiso Athletics has been able to take uh, advantage of that with the exception of some rain in the region. Um, certainly warm enough to keep Yeah, that. oh, definitely. <laughs> and the hype continues to build for the Valparaiso basketball team as a uh, oh, yeah. college hoop season oh, is right around the corner definitely. here and uh, expected to be more competitive in the Missouri Valley this year. Definitely. Thank you, Blake. After the break, Heather will have a final look at the weather. TV, your campus, your story. So our biggest concern for this week moving forward with fall break upon us Wednesday, our temperatures are going to drop quite significantly after Wednesday hits Thursday. It's going to be lows and highs in the 50s and 40s. Wow. So it looks like it comes just in time for the start of our fall break. I know. It's great timing, huh? Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. get out and enjoy the last bit of summer weather. Yes, before our fall weather certainly <laughs> hits us. Well, and I've heard that these are the warmest temperatures in the Chicagoland region since 2010. So it's not like we see these 80 degree temperatures in October every year. Yeah, we never really see these temperatures in this area. We're usually feeling more like fall with fall leaves falling. And I've even seen some graphics recently from Ellen Baca that show that our foliage is very behind compared to other places and even in Michigan too. It makes you wonder if we're going to take that quick snap in a winter like it always seems to without a fall break much of a fall i feel like we probably will i'm not ready for that at <laughs> I all hope we don't. Yeah, I hope can we just too. like ease into fall now and then like have a longer fall yes yes, yes. <laughs> i love fall so if it lasts for a long time i'm totally fine but snow makes me happy too uh, i'm i am not ready for winter <laughs> yet <laughs> thanks heather from blake heather and i thank you so much for joining and we'll see you in two weeks on 15 news at five